to talk about the Holy Ghost, the one that we need. Somebody tell me something quickly about the Holy Ghost that we talked about. Not things you didn't know, things you already knew, but something about the Holy Ghost. Go on, Sister Turner. Well, Ms. praise Turner. God. I did have scripture, you know, the Lord regarding the homework. Uh -huh. um, a joy work. I, the Lord gave, gave me just in my sleep because I was like, what am I going to talk about? What am I? He gave me Moses. Okay. Praise yes. God. The children of Israel, praise okay. God. And the scripture was Exodus. Praise God. Yes. And that's why I started. I'm like, oh God, I don't have my uh -huh. Bible with me again. That's it's all right. Exodus. And the Lord had given me Moses leading the children of Israel that's right. out of the hands of uh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, praise Amen. God, in the in the um, it's Exodus 33, 14, the Holy Spirit, and he said, my presence shall go with thee, okay. and I will give thee rest, praise God, Amen. that was my scripture, and he said, um, and he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence, you know, so that was what the Lord had given me, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that's okay. No, that's good. Amen. No, so, so Moses is saying, he don't, don't send me anywhere that, that you're not going to be there as well. Amen. Amen. I, mean, I know we can say the same thing. Go, go on, since I see your hand up. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, uh, Mother God. Galloway. Amen. I'm going to go to uh, the book of 1 Samuel. Okay. Uh, you said go to the Old Testament. That's so I go right. first, first Samuel, the 16th chapter, verses 13. I'm going to do my three real quick. One, two, three. Okay. So I'm going to right. the book of First Samuel, the 16th yeah, chapter. Mama. And then we're going to do the 13th uh, verse, and we're going to do the 14th verse, and then we'll jump over to the 23rd verse. Okay, uh, go ahead. All right. The 13th verse said, then Samuel right. took... The, Why are you uh, so loud? the horn of the oil Look and anointed mind. him in the midst of his brothers and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ra. And then the 14th verse said, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now I'm going to jump over to the 23rd verse. Okay. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul and David took in heart and played with his hands and Saul was refreshed and was well and the evil spirit departed right. from him. So in that latter part verse, it would be talking about how the Holy Spirit was activated and David playing music. Amen. To release that, that uh, oppression, the depression. Amen. So you all see, uh, Sister J Jefferson, I see your hand. You see how the Spirit came upon people and, and left. It came upon and departed. You found the scriptures in the Old Testament, and we're going to talk about how the Spirit acts now. Uh, Sister Jefferson, is that Sister Jefferson? Yes, ma'am. Go so, ahead. So I found two scriptures that I actually had questions about. Okay. Um, uh, in, in the Old Testament, one is uh, Leviticus 6 and 27. Okay. And it says, everyone who touches its flesh must be holy. And when its blood is sprinkled on any garment, you, you shall wash that on which it was sprinkled in a holy place. Mm -hmm. Okay, now okay. that's the priest uh, declaring what's clean and unclean. From the Old Testament. From okay. the Old Testament, yes. Okay. okay. And then the other one, okay, let me go back and find it. And then the other one was uh, uh, Lamentations 2 and 20. Mm -hmm. And it uh, says, see, O Lord, and consider to whom have you done this? Should we, I mean, should the women eat their offspring, the children they have cuddled? Should the priest and prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? Okay. I'm not sure how that relates, but. Um... So, so those are two separate scriptures, not to say that they relate, but I had questions about, because I know that in the Old Testament, things were done differently than the New Testament. And so in, in this, this last scripture, was it saying, was it 
so I just wanted clarification on those two scriptures. Um, is it no longer, you know, because when the Holy Ghost came, so yes, yeah, so I just need, I just want to. Well, definitely, the scripture is not inferring that anyone should eat their children or or anything like. Right. That. Yeah. So and was it? It was being. Was it being sarcastic? Um, like. Yeah. Sometimes the the scriptures will come as a rhetorical question. In other words, you know the answer is no, but it's mm -hmm. a rhetorical question. Many times Jesus taught in those manners too, but never in Christendom, never in Judaism or anything was human sacrifice ever acceptable. God never allowed human sacrifice. So that would never be the case in, in, in that situation. That would be a, sort of what you would call a rhetorical question. You, we would have to read the whole contents of yeah. that in order to get a better understanding. Sometimes you just can't take one scripture to get an understanding. You got to go to, sometimes you got to go to the chapter before, let alone a few scriptures before. Mm -hmm. So that's just taking one issue. Um, out of that. But I wanted you all to just get a chance to, number one, think about it and praise the Lord for the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost has come to be a help. And we're going to talk about that and learn about some of those things even more today. Uh, so let me go ahead. Anyone else? I think we'll go on because I, I know our time is getting um, uh, a little away from us. And so we don't want our time to get away. I'm going to pull this up. And I'm not sure if you all got the, the slideshow or not for this week. But if you didn't, we'll make sure that you get it for this week. Okay. So we've been talking about the Holy Ghost. We're going to talk about, and this week we're going to talk about a little bit more. I want to give you a little more information and then we're going to get into our lesson. So the names of the Holy Ghost. We know that the Holy Ghost uh, has been named by many things. Sometimes we say Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, same thing, right class? Same person. And uh, so in this, I wanted to, you to look at this and I'm not sure if you're looking at your, um, your handout or not, but the Holy Ghost is known by all of these things, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of adoption, uh, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of faith, the comforter. And those are scriptures. I've given you scripture. We don't really have the time to go over every single scripture, but uh, anybody see one of those that they want to want to pick up and, and read the scripture? Okay, sister, which one you want to do? Um, if I say sister, uh, no, no offense. Missionary. Turner, go ahead. You got me mixed up with Joyce. But the one that um, stands out to me is the comforter, the spirit of comforter, okay. John 14 and 26. That's the one that I stood out. You wanted me to read that scripture? Yeah, read that, read okay. that. Okay, let me get to it real quick. John, here we go, 14 and 26. Mm -hmm. There's Jesus speaking. But yes. the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. All whatsoever right. I have said unto you. Amen. That's what stood out to me. Amen. Yeah, you know, I did get you mixed up with Joyce. <laughs> but that's so crazy. So the Holy Ghost is also known as the comforter. He's also known as the spirit of adoption. And it could, any, anyone else see one that they want to read the scripture on? that you may not have known that the Holy Ghost is known, okay? Brother Solomon, right, which one do you want to do? Second Corinthians 4.13. Okay, go ahead and read that for us. The spirit of faith. He's called the spirit of faith. We have in the same spirit of faith, according to according it is written. Okay. I believe, and therefore... Have I spoken, we ought to believe and there will speak. Okay. So the scriptures say he is the spirit of faith. He's the one. He's the one that gives us to know when we need to be saved. And he comes and he, he employs us and he tells us that we need to be saved. Sometimes we think about 
uh, something, I think we mentioned it last time, something said son to me, that's not something. If some, if the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, words of faith, words of, of holiness, words of with wisdom to help us to do what's right. That's what the Holy Ghost came to do, to guide us. I think Sister Turner read that. He, he'd be our comforter to guide us, to lead us. Go ahead, sis. I see, I see you with your hand up. Amen. Going, I wanna, Sister Brooks. Okay. Amen. I want to read uh, the spirit of truth. That's John 16 and 13. Good. It says, however, when he, the however, when he, the spirit of the truth has come, he will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak for himself, but, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you things that are to come. Amen. 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 Don't we need the Holy Ghost? Amen. Because he will lead and guide and do all those things. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. One more and then we're going to go on. But the, you all have the scripture. Look at this. These are just telling us. These are titles. These are names of the Holy Ghost. These are functions of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost does all these things. Go ahead, sis. You have one more you want to read? Hey Amen. I was just going to deal with the spirit of holiness. Okay, good. Over there, Romans 1 and 4. Mm -hmm. Romans 1 and 4 says, And declare to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Amen. The spirit of, what did he say? Holiness. It's still holiness. You know, it, it's the 21st century, but we still have to live holy. And the Holy Ghost will help us to do that. He will help us. He will guide and lead us into that. So we have that. We won't go over uh, any of the others, but these are different names of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Uh -oh. Okay, let's see. All right, I wanted to go over a few things with you. Now, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, there's emblems that we see around that, that represent uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, somebody tell me what this one is. Unmute yourself. Is that the dove? It's a dove. It, it, you've heard the expression. Remember when John baptized Jesus, he said, I saw a dove, the Spirit coming down as a dove. So one of the uh, one of the ways that uh, we recognize, or you see in the Bible, you hear them talking about the dove. That's just a symbol of the Holy Ghost. Okay, here's another one. I want real quick. Let's see, what is this one? A picture of, and it's a, a symbol a of the, a river. A river, or what else? What's what's inside of the river? A tree. Well. Oh. The, well, the tree's on the side of the river, but what's inside of the river? I love water. Fish. What is it? Water. 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 That's what this is represented. The spirit is represented as water. Water. So let's, let's look at these scriptures. Okay, so in Isaiah, it talks about, I will pour. I will pour my spirit upon. I will pour my spirit. And then John, anyone can get John 7, verses 37 and 39. So the Holy Ghost is represented as water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers. You heard that scripture, saints? Of living water. The Holy Ghost is, is an emblem of water or signified as water. Amen. That was just the prettiest picture I can find that had water, but it just representing water. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. So this is talking about the Holy Ghost now, in the days that we live in now, okay? It is a gift. The Holy Ghost is a gift for every believer. It's for each one of us. He's there. And when I say it's a gift, the baptism is a gift. The Holy Ghost, is he an it or a person? He is person. a person. When we refer to him, he is person. a person. He is the third person of the Trinity. He's part of the Godhead. He's the triune God, the three parts of God. 
But the baptism, the whole act of being baptized, that's an experience that he does for us. It is a gift. The Holy Ghost is a gift given to believers. And those are the scriptures that, uh, that relate to that. And we only have four minutes, so I'm going to sort of move it a little bit faster. That experience that we have once been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongue, that's an experience we can see often. It's not a one-time thing. God could fill us and anoint us as often as we, if we yield ourselves more and more to him. The more you yield yourself to God, the more he comes in, the more he comes. We draw nigh to him. The scriptures say he draws nigh to us. Okay. And the results, what are the results? Why would you want, someone asked that question. Why would you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Because it's a gift that God has given to us. And he tells us to be filled. And when we're filled with the Holy Ghost, we have power. We have power. We have power to witness. That was the first thing that the Holy Ghost, it says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost have come upon you. If we recall, Peter and the disciples, they were saved. But when hardship came, when persecution came, Peter denied Christ. And as the Lord had told Peter, he said, when trouble come before the cock crows, through, you're going to deny me three times. Because Peter wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. He was saved. He had acknowledged, but he didn't have the power to stand firm in the Lord. That's what the Holy Ghost does. Gives us power to stand firm. It gives us power to be confident. We are never alone. When you're saved, I don't care what you're going through. We can feel the spirit of God. The spirit of God is there with us. Someone had their hand up. Since I can, I think that Sister, Sister Ivory, was that you with your hand up? Okay. So it gives us no, power. Oh, that wasn't you, sorry. No. I'm not sure who, who it was, but someone had their hand up. It was Missionary Brooks. I was just agreeing with you. Oh, okay. All right. All right. It gives us power. We need that power. Power to pray. The scriptures say when we don't even know what to pray. You ever been in a, circum a situation you didn't know how to pray? You didn't know what to ask the Lord for. Well, you know what? That's what the Holy Ghost is there for. So sometimes when we just, we just want, oh Lord, you, you ever just been in the situation, you just, you just say, Lord, oh Lord, the Holy Ghost is interpreting that groan, that, that thing that we need, because the Holy Ghost knows what we need. We don't even know sometimes what we have need of, but the power of the Holy Ghost, that's why we seek him. That's why we love him, because we need him for a day. And in the day and a time like this, we certainly need the Lord. Okay, you don't want to come up. All right. Power to live. The scripture says that it's his desire that we have an abundant life, a full life, a complete life, a life that we know that 99 and a half won't do. We got to surrender everything to the Lord. And that's what the Holy Ghost, when we get filled and filled up with him and continue to desire to get filled up with him daily, we live a powerful life, a life that's adorning to God, a life that God loves. Power to guide. The Holy Ghost comes and he will guide us. The scripture says he will guide us into all truth. We don't have to wonder and guess about things. The Holy Ghost will guide and direct us. Those are the things I know they ask us to come back about 8.15, but I just want us to just embrace the fact, all this information that we're getting about the Holy Ghost should help us to love the Lord more and to embrace it. Information about the Holy Ghost gives us victory. It gives us the victory that we need. To next week's homework, I want you to look in the New Testament. 
and find some scriptures about the Acts. So though you go in the book of Acts, it's called the book of Acts. It really is the act of the Holy Ghost. It's going to show you that people were filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they had another experience of feeling. It give us a, uh, the unction to know that we continue to be desired, to be anointed by the Lord day in and day out, continually. So I got the W-I-I-F-M's. Anybody know what that means? What's in it for me? I just want you to think about being filled with the Holy Ghost. And if you already feel, being refilled and continuing to seek the Lord the more. What's in it for you? Abundant life, a life full of joy, a life knowing that the comforter is always there, even in the midst of trouble, a life to know that the Holy Ghost will lead and guide us and lead and guide us into all truth. So this week, your homework assignment, go ahead, look in the New Testament and find some of the acts of the Holy Ghost. Continue to ask the Lord to anoint you the more, to fill you the more, continue to seek the Lord with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul. And we know God is going to bless and to keep us. I'm going to pray us. Anyone have any questions or concerns? All right, let's pray. So God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time, God. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for the fire that burns within us and the oil that anoints us and the water, Lord, that flows in our bellies, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for all that you are, God. We ask you to bless this class. Touch each one, God. Anoint us the more, God, with your spirit. Help us to grow, God, in the knowledge of you, God. Strengthen us now. Touch us now, God, that we will be the witnesses that you have called for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Give Amen. him a praise. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. We're looking to God. Amen. So,